Have you ever been working on a Cisco router or switch and you see a port type and you're not quite sure what goes in that port? Well, that's the focus of this video. Hi, my name is Kevin Wallace. And in this video, we're gonna take a look at how to identify and identify the purpose of different ports on Cisco routers and switches. For example, we're gonna begin with a look at a console port which looks a lot like an ethernet port, but it's a different cable, it's a different purpose. We'll talk about serial ports. And of course, we'll consider the most popular type of port the ethernet ports, both copper and fiber. And we might be surprised to see that some routers or switches have USB ports. What are they doing there? And what are SFPs, small form factor pluggable transceivers? And then we're gonna wrap things up with a look at different power over ethernet standards. And just before we get into this training, I wanted to let you know that many of my flagship courses, uh, these five courses you see on screen, are now available on Udemy. That's right, we're doing an experiment where we're taking uh, some of our flagship courses that normally cost $399 and we're making them available on Udemy for less than $20. And you can see what we have available right now by going to kwtrain.com slash Udemy. Again, that's kwtrain.com slash Udemy. Now let's get into our training video for this week where we're gonna be identifying several different port types on Cisco routers and switches. In this video, we're going to identify different ways of connecting in to Cisco devices, such as Cisco routers and Cisco switches. Specifically, we'll take a look at the console port, a serial port, different types of ethernet ports, a USB port, we'll see what an SFP, a small form factor pluggable is, and also take a look at different PoE or power over ethernet standards. But let's get started with our first type of port, which is the console port. And this is the port that we might connect to in order to do our administrative tasks on a router or a switch. Especially when we first take the device out of the box and it's not on the network yet, we might want to connect into the console port to do that initial configuration. And here I've got my laptop connected into a Cisco 4300 series router, and I'm going into the console port using a console cable and I'm using a terminal emulator that will allow me to treat a USB port on my laptop as a serial port. Years ago, it was very common for PCs to have serial ports on them, such as a DB9 port, but a lot of modern laptops don't have that. So I need to convince my laptop to treat my USB port as a serial port because that console connection is a serial connection. And if we take a closer look at the console port, we'll see that there are a couple of ways of connecting to the console. One way is to use a USB type mini B cable, or the way I was doing it is using a Cisco console cable. And I want you to be cautious when you're selecting a cable to plug into that console port, because you'll notice that it accepts an RG45 connector. However, the console cable is flat and it is not wired like an ethernet cable. So we need to make sure we're using a, a Cisco console cable. And when you're setting up your terminal emulator for the serial port settings, by default, you're gaming to be using a 9600 as your baud rate. You'll have eight data bits, no parity, and a one stop bit. So 9600, eight, nine, and one, those are gonna be your serial settings. And speaking of serial, we could add additional serial ports to a router, typically not to a switch, but to a router, we might want to connect out to a wide area network provider, or we might want to connect multiple routers together. But here I have a module in this router that has four serial ports on it. And years ago, one of the common uses for a serial port was to connect out to a wide area network. We would have a router and we would come out of a serial port into a CSU DSU. That stands for Channel Service Unit, Data Service Unit. Think of that as not an analog modem, but a digital modem. And that would allow us to get out to a service provider. And when we used that serial connection, the router end of that cable was the DTE end. DTE, that stands for Data Terminal Equipment. And the CSU DSU, that digital modem, it acted as the DCE data communication equipment. And in a lab environment, you might want to interconnect a couple of routers together. Well, if you do that, you can do that with a serial cable, but remember one end of that serial cable is DTE, the other end is DCE, 
And when you're doing your configuration, it's typically the DCE end that you'll configure clocking on because this is a synchronous connection. You've got to have clocking to say when one bit stops and another bit starts. But in today's networks, it's not very common to see those serial ports in use. What we see a lot of in use are various types of Ethernet ports. Those Ethernet connections go out to our network devices, and uh, that Ethernet port might be a copper port that accepts an RJ45 connector, or it might be some sort of a fiber port, which is typically going to give us a further distance limitation than using copper. And uh, these Ethernet ports really are the heart and soul of our networks today. We have an Ethernet switch which connects out to our end devices, such as a desktop computer, and we might then connect our Ethernet switch to a router to get out to the rest of the world. But all these connections are using our Ethernet ports. And we typically find Ethernet ports on both switches and routers. Another type of port we might see is a USB port. Now USB, that stands for Universal Serial Bus. And you might have used a USB flash drive before to copy some data to or from a computer. Well, a lot of our modern routers and switches, they have a USB port. And we could plug in a USB flash drive, as I've done here. And one of the things that can do for us is give us an additional storage device. We might want to put a copy of a Cisco iOS on there. We might want to put some backup files on there. We might want to transfer some data to or from the router or switch using this USB device. But you notice after I plug in this USB flash drive, there was a message that appeared on my console saying I have a new device added and I can copy files to and from that USB storage device. And a type of port that gives us a lot of flexibility as to what we're going to interconnect with is an SFP port. Here we have a Cisco Catalyst 2960CG switch and it has a couple of SFP ports. That stands for Small Form Factor Pluggable. And the way this can give us flexibility is we can put an SFP module into one of those ports and that module might have an RJ45 receptacle for a copper connection or maybe it's got a receptacle for a fiber optic connection. That means we can select an SFP module to give us the kind of connection we need. Maybe copper, maybe fiber. And here we're talking about an SFP port and you might find these SFP modules running at different speeds. But a typical speed, and the speed of this Cisco module that I'm showing you here, is 1 gigabit per second. But some of our higher-end switches can accept an SFP Plus module. That might give us 10 gigabits per second of throughput. Or we might even have network gear, maybe found in a data center, that supports something called a QSFP Plus. Q is quad. We're talking about a quad small form factor pluggable plus meaning that we get four times the 10 gigabit speed. That can give us 40 gigabits per second of throughput. And this is not a complete listing and the speeds can vary depending on your equipment, but the big advantage of an SFP port is it gives us flexibility to connect fiber or copper or whatever media we need for a given environment. And finally in this video, let's consider a PoE port. And PoE stands for Power Over Ethernet. That's going to allow us to connect in a device such as a wireless access point or maybe an IP phone. And instead of trying to find a wall outlet to, to power these devices, we can provide the power for that access point or for that IP phone from the switch itself. It can send power over the Ethernet cable along with the Ethernet signal. And you might notice on this particular switch, it has identified four of our ports, ports 1, 2, 13, and 14, as 60-watt PoE ports. And that's reminding us that there are different PoE standards. Those four 60-watt ports, they're supporting IEEE 802.3BT Type 3. There's a Type 4 not supported on this switch that can give us 100 watts of power over an Ethernet cable. But one of the most common standards that you'll see on today's equipment is IEEE 802.3AT that can give you 30 watts of power max. Or you might have some older equipment that supports IEEE 802.3AF that gives you 15.4 watts of power. That was the original IEEE power over Ethernet standard. And I think it's interesting that prior to the IEEE standard, Cisco actually did power over Ethernet. They called it Cisco inline power. And their maximum wattage for the proprietary Cisco inline power was 7.7 .7 watts. 
So I think it's really interesting that a few months later when uh, the IEEE released their standard, it was exactly double Cisco's 7.7 watts coming in at 15.4 watts. And that's a look at some of the different port types we might find on a Cisco router or switch. <laughs> 